Welcome to today's webinar presentation by Dr. Osama Hamdi. My name is Michael Montalto. I am Senior Director of Medical Affairs at Metagenics. Today's presentation is part of the Take Control webinar series featuring Dr. Osama Hamdi. Dr. Hamdi will deliver five Take Control webinars on the role of nutrition intervention and lifestyle modification and will provide practical approaches for sustained and improved health outcomes for the diabetic patient. Dr. Hamdi earned his medical and doctoral degrees from Mansoura Faculty of Medicine in Egypt and his fellowship in endocrinology, diabetes, and metabolism from the University of Missouri and Harvard University. Dr. Hamdi is a fellow of the American College of Endocrinology and is currently the medical director of the Obesity Clinical Program at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center in Boston. Dr. Hamdi is also a director of inpatient diabetes management at Jocelyn and an assistant professor of medicine at the Harvard Medical School. Dr. Hamdi was a member of the Nutrition Guidelines Committee of the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists that developed Guidelines for Americans in 2006 and chaired the task force that developed Jocelyn's Clinical Nutrition Guidelines in 2011. Dr. Hamdi was a co-investigator of two landmark applied clinical research studies, the Diabetes Prevention Program and the Look Ahead Trial, evaluating the long-term effects of lifestyle intervention combined with nutrition strategies to improve health outcomes in diabetic patients. Dr. Hamdi translated the clinical research results of these studies into a clinical practice model through the creation of Jocelyn's Why Wait program. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Osama Hamdi for today's Take Control webinar. Hello, this is the last webinar in our series, and I think it is very important and will be exciting for everyone. In this webinar, we will be talking about the optimal lifestyle intervention for patients with diabetes. This is the Joslin Why Weight program. This is a program that was started at Joslin in 2005 and had been very successful in clinical practice. And we had seen patients losing weight and maintaining weight loss for long duration. I will take you step by step through this program. And I hope you will be able to implement as much as you can from this great program in your clinical practice. For any lifestyle intervention, you need a multidisciplinary approach. I personally am not a believer that one single approach will be effective. You need dietary intervention, but we need to discuss again what is a dietary composition, what the caloric level, will we use meal replacement or not in weight management, and we have to see the data that support any of the dietary intervention what type of exercise that we will use. Definitely exercise is very important. And you cannot implement any dietary plan without including an exercise program. But we need to know what type of the exercise, what duration of exercise, and what is the frequency of exercise. There is cognitive behavior modification. This is a term for behavior intervention or behavior support. is very important as well. And then finally, diabetes medications. Many diabetes medications cause significant weight gain. And you cannot be successful in weight management in patients with diabetes without adjusting those medications, not only at the beginning of the program, but also through the program. But even if you implement any of those, you need to find a way to improve adherence because most clinical trials show that people who do very well for longer duration are those people who are more adherent to every intervention for weight management. So again, these are the six components of multidisciplinary program, exercise program, and the exercise program that we'll explain here is individualized, gradual, progressive, and balanced exercise program. Diet, and the diet that we will explain here is what's called the structured dietary intervention and modification of dietary composition as we explained in the previous webinars. Then we have the education, education about diabetes and education about weight management, behavior modification, a medication adjustment, and no successful weight loss without keeping logs for food, exercise, and blood glucose. This method will help a lot because people can learn from those logbox can track behavior and can also add some interesting intervention that can modify 
the weight loss. We explained this model in many previous publications, the results and also the explanation of the model. The references are here if you would like to read about the entire model and how we implemented this model as a refresher after this webinar. Let me quickly show you what is exactly we did in the YWIT program and how it is a little bit different than the look ahead study. As I mentioned before, you cannot achieve weight loss without reducing the caloric intake. But we made it very simple. For women, we gave them 1500 calorie diet. For men, we give them 1800 calorie diet. But you have to remember that if the weight loss is not as you expect, which is one to two pounds per week, you may need to cut even more. So maybe the 15 become 12 and the 18 become 1500. We use the meal replacement in the program. We give two meal replacement and two snacks. And we transition people to natural food by week six. Look ahead also did the same give two meal replacement and one snack, but they did the transition at week 20. Regarding the exercise program, although the look ahead was mostly aerobic exercise, in our program, the Y weight program, we implemented gradual exercise, but balanced exercise. It is flexibility exercise, strength exercise, and aerobic exercise, but more of the strength exercise. And I will explain in a few minutes why the idea of a strength exercise. But the aim is not like in the look ahead, 175 minutes per week. Our aim is to reach 300 minutes per week. And again, I will explain why we made this recommendation. So let me first start with a structured dietary intervention and the modified macronutrients composition. I believe from the previous four webinars, you know exactly what we will do in our nutrition plan. So the nutrition plan is basically from natural food for dinners and snacks, plus the calorie supplement. But as I mentioned before, caloric intake is down to 1,500 for women and 1,800 for men. And the carbohydrates, no more than 40 to 45%. But the glycemic index is also lower. We mentioned before why glycemic index is very important. And then we increase the protein intake to 1 to 1.5 gram per kilogram of the body weight. We increase the fiber, 25 grams of fiber or more. We increase the monounsaturated fat. And I believe after the previous webinars, you understand why we increase the protein, fiber, and more fat. And then finally, we reduce the saturated fat from meat, and we reduce the sodium as well. So these are the fundamental principles of the dietary intervention for diabetes weight management in the Y weight program. Regarding the meal replacement, let me go to the look ahead study. In the look ahead study, after one year, we looked to those people who used more meal replacement per year. So people who used around two meal replacement per day in combination with a lifestyle intervention lost around 11.2% of their initial body weight. Participant who used one per day or slightly more lost less weight and who used much less lost even less weight. So it looks like meal replacement had been very beneficial in the weight loss. We mentioned transition at week six, but we give people an option. You can continue if you like, and even you can continue for several months or even years if you would like to maintain that dietary intervention. It is a structured meal. It is balanced meal. It has more protein, lower glycemic index carbohydrates, and in the same time, they have more MOFA, monounsaturated fat. As I mentioned, the amino acids in many of those meal replacement has very good impact not only on insulin stimulation, but also on GLP-1 hormone glucagon-like peptide 1. And as you know, glucagon-like peptide 1 stimulates the beta cell to secrete more insulin and suppress the alpha cell secretion of glucagon. So this is, again, another beneficial benefit, and GLP-1 also enhances satiety. Now, moving to the exercise. As I mentioned before, it's very important for us first to know what is the benefit of exercise. 
but also to understand what type of exercise, what duration of exercise, what frequency of exercise. So let me first show you what is the benefits from exercise and increased physical activity. Visceral fat goes down, and especially in people who do strength exercise. Visceral fat goes significantly down with exercise. I mentioned in the first webinar, increased visceral fat is linked to insulin resistance and atherosclerosis. The second observation, when people exercise, their systolic and diastolic blood pressure goes down. Their triglyceride level goes down. Their good cholesterol, HDL, starts to go up. So you see blood pressure and lipid benefit with exercise. As I mentioned before, when the muscles are active, their uptake of glucose from the blood is not dependent on insulin. So the uptake is enhanced. The fitness of the body is much better. Quality of life is much better. But one important message here is that maintenance of weight loss is mostly dependent on the level of exercise. And people who continue to maintain very good level of exercise after weight loss maintain the weight loss for longer duration. And then finally, the vascular resistance. So improvement in the blood flow enhances the secretion of nitric oxide from the endothelial cells and dilate the artery and improve the cardiovascular outcome. So there is many benefits of exercise. But when you would ask people to go for exercise, they usually have barriers for exercise. One of the things that we found significantly reduce that barrier is using short bouts of exercise. So short bouts means 10 minutes instead of longer duration of exercise, which is 40 minutes. Because it's very easy for you to do 10 minutes of exercise spread all over the day. In reality, clinical trials show that when people do short bouts of exercise, they exercise more and their compliance to exercise is more and their weight loss is more. So I tell my patients in a very simple, easy way, why not in the morning do 10 minutes of stretching at lunch, eat your lunch and walk in a brisk walking for 10 minutes. In the evening, in front of the television, use a stretch band, focus on the television, but use a stretch band in your hand and do some strength exercise. Imagine if you do 10 minutes morning, 10 minutes lunch, and 10 minutes evening. This is 30 minutes per day. This is 210 minutes per week. So it is very easy and doesn't require too many equipments to do that type of exercise. But in general, for people to be healthy and have better glucose control and better weight loss, they need to combine all varieties of exercise. Flexibility, like stretching, aerobic, like walking and swimming and biking and even dancing, and strength exercise like resistance band or lightweights. I will add here that strength exercise is the most important exercise during weight loss. And the reason is very simple. People lose weight during weight loss if they just use nutrition intervention only. In reality, 30% of the weight loss is from the muscle mass if you just follow a diet plan. If you use exercise, you reduce the percentage loss of the muscle mass to around only 10% of the total weight loss. So instead of losing three pounds, out of the 10 pounds from muscle mass, you lose only one pound out of the 10 pounds from the muscle mass. So most of the weight loss become from fat loss. The exercise in the Y weight program, as you see in this table, had been going gradually up. So we're not starting with 60 minutes, but we start with 20, 40 minutes, four days per week for the first four weeks. Then we increase slightly, five days per week, then six days per week. We increase the duration to 40 to 45 minutes, and then finally 50 to 60 minutes. But the type of the exercise as well, we start to incorporate different modalities of exercise and gradually increase the number of the types of the exercise over time. Finally, about medications. Think of diabetes medication as a medication that may modify body weight. So first identify what are those medications. There is medication that cause weight gain, 
And even on those medications that cause weight gain, some medication cause significant weight gain, and some medication cause modest weight gain. This group of medication that cause weight gain, I will put them in list A. But in list B, I will put medication that are weight neutral or medication that cause weight loss. So if we look to the examples here, pioglitazone, rosiglitazone, sulfonylureas, insulin, all of them cause significant weight gain. Longer acting sulfonylureas, angelinize, and some types of insulin has less weight gain. They are still causing weight gain, still in list A, but if we need to keep some of those medications, maybe it's better to switch to those medications that has less weight gain. And then you have list B, which has medication that are weight neutral, like DBB4 inhibitors, metformin, alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. And then you have medication that cause significant weight loss. On the top of that list, GLP-1 analogs, pramlinatide, and then SGLT2 inhibitors, canagliflozin and dabagliflozin. I mentioned before that those medications also improve glucose toxicity. So it makes sense that when you look to those medications, you need to do some changes at the beginning of the program and even during weight loss. So medication list A, I will either stop them, reduce them, or switch them. Sometimes you cannot stop them, you can reduce them, or you can switch them. Medication that are weight neutral, I will continue them. Those has no impact on body weight. And medication that cause weight loss are welcomed. You know, those medications can help to enhance the weight loss. They are diabetes medication still, but they are very helpful for weight loss. So this is a very good strategy. And a few years ago, we published a review article about medication and weight, and we explained the algorithm that we used in the Y-Weight program for adjustment on diabetes medication before and during and after weight loss. So let me review the why weight results. So, so far, we implemented the dietary modification, which I mentioned, the lower caloric intake, lower carbohydrates, lower glycemic index, higher protein, more fiber, more MOFA, less saturated fat and less sodium, multiple exercise regimen, flexibility, strength, and the aerobic exercise up to 60 minutes per day, aiming for 300 minutes per week, and adjustment of medication. Plus those, we added cognitive behavior modification, similar to what we implemented in the diabetes prevention program and look ahead, and also we provided education. We run people in groups, and each group is 10 to 15 people who spend two hours at Joslin Diabetes Center in the evening, so they have the education part, they have the intervention part. Uh, we review their logbook. We have logbook for food, logbook for exercise, and we download their meters. We adjust their medication on a weekly basis. So now let us look to the results of the Y-weight, especially in relation to the weight loss. And I would like you to just focus on the blue line, because the blue line is the average for participant in the Y-weight program. As you can see, the loss in average, 24 pounds or 10% of their body weight by the end of the 12 weeks of intervention. They start to gain some little weight back, but the most interesting, they maintained 6.4% weight loss at five years. This is 60 months, as you can see in the axis up for five years. This is the longest duration of weight loss we have seen in clinical practice. I mentioned it before, we need to help our patient to lose around 7% weight loss and maintain that 7 weight loss for that long duration. And the most interesting is that they maintain that weight loss by their own. And we started to look back to those people who achieved 7% or more at one year in comparison to those people who lost less than 7% and maintained less than 7% by one year. In reality, participants who lost 7% of their initial body weight and maintained it for one year were able to maintain around 9% weight loss for five years. This number is not a small number. This is 53% of the participant, which means that one in two is able to maintain most of that weight loss for up to five years. This is even better or similar 
to some bariatric surgeons. The group who failed to maintain weight loss more than 7% for the year start to gain weight back, but they are still lower by around 3.5% weight loss at five years. We looked back to our record and we found that that group who maintained the most of the weight loss is actually the group who did very good amount of exercise. So the whole notion that people lose weight and all of them gain the weight back is not true. People maintain the weight loss for longer duration. And in reality, more than 50% maintain all that weight loss for all that duration. The major cut point is how much maintenance of weight loss at one year. If people maintain 7% or more, they are more likely to maintain the weight loss for longer duration. We learned a lot from the Y weight program, but the look ahead study and the Y weight now showed us for sure that long term weight loss can be achieved both in clinical research and in clinical practice. But what is interesting here is that fat mass went down, percentage of body fat went down, but if you look to the muscle mass to the fat mass, it went up. And that's exactly our aim, is to maintain the muscle mass. Because if people lose muscle mass during weight loss, their basal metabolic rate will go down, their energy expenditure will go down, and if they eat back what they used to eat, they start to gain weight. Most of that weight gain at that time will be fat. They repeat the cycle again and lose muscle mass, and then gain fat back. And every time in that yo-yo wave, of down and up, they lose muscle mass and they gain fat mass. As I mentioned, muscle mass is a very precious mass. You build this mass by growth hormone, by sex hormones, by insulin. As people get older, all those hormones are lower. So the chances to build the muscle mass back is very limited. So that's why it's very important during weight loss to increase protein intake and also to add the strength exercise to maintain the muscle mass. If you look now to the A1C, I mentioned before, every time you implement proper medical nutrition therapy, A1C goes down. And in a wide weight program, it went from 7.5 down to 6.6. .6. But the most interesting, those people cut their medications down by 50 to 60%. So the A1C is down, but they cut their medication down. Look ahead, the study should exactly the same. Medication are down by 20, 30%. So definitely weight loss and the improvement in insulin sensitivity has very good impact. And people participant in the program were able to maintain A1C less than 7%. 82% was able to reach A1C less than 7% in comparison to 60% before the program. Even 6.5, around 70%, achieved A1C less than 6.5. And we have few patients even were able to reach less than 5.7% A1C with no medication or with just one oral medication. And in the same time, because of the change in the dietary fat, you see reduction in the triglycerides and also reduction in the LDL. The triglyceride went down around 21% and LDL went down around 11.4%. As I mentioned before, even with the increase in protein, you will see reduction in the microalbuminuria. This is, looks like a paradox. You go up on the protein, you see reduction, and also weight loss and the reduction in blood pressure had been the etiology for the improvement in kidney function. Even at one year, not immediately after the program, they are still having less microalbuminuria. What about the cost for diabetes? Diabetes is a costly disease. And the American Diabetes Association in 2013 showed the cost in 2012. And the cost was staggering around $245 billion. This is 41% more than the cost in 2007, just five years ago. And most of that cost had been spent in the hospital. 43% is spent in the hospital because we are treating complications from diabetes, renal failure and dialysis, amputations, heart attack. So if we are serious 
to reduce the healthcare cost, we need to help those people with diabetes to lose weight and improve insulin sensitivity. So when we look to the cost effectiveness, you look to the total healthcare cost, and you look also to the cost utilization, hospitalization, and clinic visits. Look ahead study showed significant reduction in hospitalization among those people who were in the intensive lifestyle intervention. In the Y weight program, we have seen significant reduction in diabetes medications. Just to give you an example, long acting insulin went down from 60 units average to 27 units average. Short acting insulin went down from 52 units average to 24 units average. 55% reduction in insulin use. Not only that, around 21% stopped short acting insulin and a good number of patients stopped all their medications. We have seen now that when people do wide weight program and they have shorter duration of diabetes, the chances for them to get partial or complete remission from diabetes, reversing diabetes course is possible with that amount of weight loss. We calculated the saving on healthcare cost and it came to be less by 27% per year. The diabetes related cost is around 44% lower per year. And this if people maintain 7% weight loss. Imagine that if people maintain the 7% weight loss, as we had seen in the Y weight program for five years, how much cost saving will occur with this weight loss? In comparison to bariatric surgery, Blue Cross Blue Shield did a study evaluating the cost of health care among 7,800 patients who did gastric bypass surgery. And they were surprised that six years before the surgery are less costly than six years after the surgery. And you can see in the upper left panel, the hospitalization was lower just in the first year, but higher in year one, two, three, four, five, and six. The visits to specialists are significantly higher. Visits to primary care physician are significantly higher. And their conclusion is that in six years after bariatric surgery, individual with type two diabetes didn't have lower healthcare cost than before surgery. So we know what is the keys to optimal lifestyle intervention. This Y weight model that we developed at Joslin. First, aim for 5 to 10% weight loss, but aim to maintain that weight loss for long duration. You need gradual and balanced exercise program. The duration of exercise, aim for 300 minutes per week. There is data now to show that those people who did 300 minutes per week were able to maintain weight loss for long duration. Type of exercise is very important. You need to implement all varieties of exercise, stretching, flexibility, and strength exercise. You need to ask your patient to keep exercise log. They need to write what their barriers of exercise and try to come with novel ideas with them. Maybe short bouts of exercise is a very good idea. Simple tools like stretch band can be used. People can put it in their suitcase, they can travel with, they can do the strength exercise anywhere. And then it's very important to change the dietary composition, not only reducing caloric intake down. It is not all calories are the same. You need to reduce the amount of carbohydrates. You need to reduce the glycemic index. You need to increase the protein intake. You need to increase the fiber intake. You need to provide menus for those people from natural food that they will use in their dinner program. And in the way weight, we give them 14 different options from the food that people eat every day. But what we did, we changed the composition based on the Joslin nutrition guidelines. We give them meal replacement. And as I showed before in the look ahead study, using those meal replacement helped weight loss. We provide them with a food log. We ask them to write down we ask them to learn what is a dietary pattern that they use, what trigger for them to eat more and consume more portions. As I mentioned, we need to adjust diabetes medication. Be away a little bit from medication that cause weight gain and try to be with medication that are weight neutral or cause weight loss. 
cognitive behavior support, give your patient some valuable tips like hunger scale, like mindful eating, like building a smart tool. All those are available in the website of the National Institute of Health that had been implemented in the diabetes prevention program. There is data now to show that group intervention is much better. Of course, if you are only in your clinical practice, you do individual, but if there is a chance that people can do it in a group, two or three or four or 10, it will be even better. There is data to show that people who weigh themselves every day, they are actually maintaining the weight loss for longer duration. Ask your patient, don't skip breakfast. This again, very important. So in my personal opinion, we had been moving in one direction for a long time. We are waiting for A1C to go up to add more and more medication. One medication, two medication, three medication, insulin, more insulin, long and short acting insulin, and we will continue to gain weight. We had been doing this practice for a long time. Of course, aggressive reduction in the A1C is important, but that aggressive reduction in the A1C can be achieved safely with even cutting medication if we implement diet and exercise at every single stage. Why weight program showed that this model actually works very well at every single stage of diabetes. We finally published all our experience in the Y weight program in book is called the Diabetes Breakthrough. It has all the details of the dietary exercise, cognitive, and educational part week by week. It is in a very easy and simple way for your patients. It is a very nice guide, and you can give it to your patients or advise your patients to follow the program if they cannot come all that way to Boston. I personally believe that every clinical practice in the U.S. and outside the U.S., can implement this model in a very easy and very simple way. The take-home messages from this presentation. Number one, we have to erase from our mind that all people with diabetes lose weight and gain weight back. In reality, look ahead the study and why weight program showed that long-term weight reduction can be successfully achieved in routine clinical practice. You need to reduce glycemic index of carbohydrates you need to increase protein to help in maintaining weight loss for longer duration. Exercise duration is very important. You need to aim for 300 minutes of exercise. But when you implement exercise, remember that the exercise should be all the varieties of exercise, stretching exercise, aerobic exercise, strength exercise. It is very good that you will advise your patient to do shorter bouts of 10 minutes each distributed along the day. And as I mentioned before, compliance will be better and even weight loss will be higher. A strength exercise is specifically important because you need to maintain the lean muscle mass. If you need to know that your weight loss is successful or not, look to the muscle mass, lean muscle mass to the fat mass before and after the program. If the ratio is going up and participants are maintaining the muscle mass, this is a successful weight loss. And by the end of the program, tell your patients, I will give you three advices to maintain the weight loss. The first advice is exercise. The second advice is also exercise. And the third advice, which is different, is to exercise. So exercise, exercise, exercise. It is the best way to maintain weight loss. If you can reach 300 minutes of exercise, and I mentioned it before, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 200, 10 minutes per week. If after one month, they go up five minutes on each one, it is easy. They are now by uh, 300 minutes of exercise. Adjustment of diabetes medication is very important. You cannot, from one hand, advise people to lose weight, and from the other hand, you are giving them medication that costs significant amount of weight gain. If you can reduce those medication or replace them with medication which are weight neutral or cause weight loss is much better. I would like to add that non-surgical weight loss is cost effective and is even more cost effective than what had been shown in the gastric bypass surgery as shown in the data from Blue Cross Blue Shield. With this, we finished the five webinars about medical nutrition therapy and lifestyle intervention. 
for prevention and management of diabetes. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you got some good information. Now go back to your clinical practice and try to implement some of the information that you got from those webinars. And I will be more than happy to answer any questions for you during those webinars or in the future. With this, thank you very much.